I'm Clark with the WikiLeaks truck. I'll take you outside and show you. <laughs> this is our garage where we sometimes work on the truck. Oh, look at that. There it is. Top secret. Yeah, you'd never know. <laughs> wow. This famous truck. So secret. It starts on the first turn. Oh, right. Did you sell it? Yeah. Oh, good. This is a truck that has no lakes. <laughs> Not a in the motor. <laughs> Come check out the back. The back uh, is... Oh, Ooh. yeah. At least Bradley Manning. Stand by, folks. You're about to see the inside of the... Oh, I can see a couch. We got the couch there and the bed behind there. And oh my God! Can I get a shot from inside? Oh, it's kind of it's kind of messy right now. Oh, what's that on the wall? What's that on the wall on the right hand side? Is that a is that an American flag I saw on the wall? Oh, I have a bunch of bunting. There's bunting on the. Yeah, it is. Very nice. Okay, cool. And mic check. We have mic check at the top. <laughs> mic check. I'll just can I get closer <laughs> to just film mic check? Oh, entering the WikiLeaks truck now. Yeah, I can see a bed and I my mother taught me not to film that kind of thing. Good. Oh, and it's lovely, actually. So folks are not going to see it, but I can see it and it's very nice. <laughs> Whoever bought this has had a bargain. Jumping down now. So Clark, can we go back um, inside? Can you tell me about your travels in this vehicle? Yeah. First day I had the truck, I was arrested by Secret Service. So we're going into Clark's, back into Clark's workshop. This is the superhero lair. This is the superhero lair. That's me. Oh dear. <laughs> so um, tell me about your travels, Clark. Um, Where have you been? Uh, just came back from Bradley Manning's trial. Oh wow, how did that go? Um, well, it was just the pre-trial, so it wasn't the whole, you know, it was, it was to see if they're going to have a court-martial. And uh, it sounds pretty rigged to me. Does it? Yeah. I don't think that uh, Julian Assange has done anything that is illegal. So. Yeah. And I don't think it doesn't they have, really matter what you think. Though. I know. But I don't think they have a. Um, <laughs> Hang on, I'm just. I don't think they have saying. a case or a, a a leg to stand on. Yeah, with him. Yeah, he's a journalist. Right. But I think what is very you know apparent is is that what was released has brought an end to the Iraq War. And what was released showed war crimes mm -hmm. and made it public what was not being allowed mm -hmm. to be known even by journalists yes. or, or anyone. Yeah. And showed wrongdoing on our part. We should take responsibility for that yeah. instead of spending our efforts trying to punish the whistleblower. We should focus on strengthening our diplomatic ties and how we do diplomacy. And yeah. it, it looks kind of grim right now, yeah. but um, I think that... So look, uh, there were a couple of fighting. things that uh, came out. One of them is that Bradley wasn't the only person to use his computer. Right. Secondly, all of his unit had passed around the collateral murder video and were looking at it, so any of them could have got affected and right. decided to blow the whistle. Thirdly, the copy of the chat logs coming from his end that were found on that computer he had access to, the name was all scored out. So there is an implication that right. that Adrian Lamo copied and pasted Brad S87 onto all of the communications that were coming from Bradley's end. Whether it was Bradley sending or not, we don't know. So all of those things were supposed to have come out in the pre-trial. Do you think that they had much significance? Uh, what's it looking like for the defense? Is it still green? I think the um, prosecution doesn't have a lot of really good evidence mm -hmm. yet. Or I think they have tried from multiple ends to get evidence mm -hmm. through the Department of Justice, through this trial, this grand jury trial going on in Alexandria, Virginia. Yeah. There's more information than I think they know how to handle. And they're not really sure how these leaks got to WikiLeaks. Yeah. And they, they're they trying to discover the timeline. Yeah. And 
who knew who and and like that really changes anything i think yeah. i think they're really wasting their time trying to set an example mm -hmm. when really they the government needs to take responsibility mm -hmm. when they do wrong well that's that's the elephant in the room right. isn't it right. the other thing that came out was that in the batch, there was a big batch of leaks found on the laptop that Bradley had access to, but it, there wasn't a match with what uh, WikiLeaks released. That's right. a bit problematic as well, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. Fire left. I don't know if Bradley Manning did it or not. If he did, he's a hero. Yeah. If he didn't, he's innocent and he's been treated very guilty. I think a big point that needs to be made is that Barack Obama has already found him guilty. That's true. And so yeah. by, by that standard, you can't have anyone that works for the government in any court, because he is the commander-in-chief, he is the president of the United States. Who can be, contradict him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who is now unbiased or capable of, of hearing that kind of trial. We've had exactly Impartial. the same problem in Australia. The prime minister said that Julian Assange had broken the law. And, you know, when someone right at the top like that says they're guilty, people are afraid to actually right. contradict. I traveled to Alexandria, Virginia to testify uh, in the uh, WikiLeaks grand jury. And during the process of the grand jury, I only gave my name and my uh, date of birth. And I pled the Fifth, First, and Fourth Amendments to every other question that was asked in the grand jury. The prosecution was very upset at my note-taking and ridiculed me the entire time for taking notes, saying things like, I would like to state for the record Mr. House is not answering the question and is instead taking notes. Can you tell me something about um, when David House was in front of the grand jury and you were, he said that out the window he could see the WikiLeaks right. truck going around like an ice so, cream van. So um, I found out about this grand jury trial uh, a week before David House was subpoenaed or before he came down. And I drove around the courthouse, which is one block, uh, nearly a hundred times. Yeah, that's what he said. He uh, kept just seeing it. Kept, I never stopped, yeah. except for at intersections. And I never got stopped. No one asked me anything. And I figured if they did, I would just say I was looking for a parking spot because the Department of Homeland Security was taking all the parking spots. They had filled them all up. They even took the handicapped spots. So I just kept driving around, and at lunch, they took a recess. I went and grabbed lunch, and David called me and said, keep driving. We can see the truck in the courtroom. The grand jury keeps laughing. They're going to have to like close the windows or something. There was nothing they could do. Yeah, so... Um, I think that was probably one of the most effective moments of the truck because it had this civilian jury having comic relief in this trial and almost kind of just poking fun at the trial in itself. It was hot and there was no AC in the truck so I had the window down, had classic rock blaring. Like I remember driving around and these two like federal agents were standing there and I had Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA blasting <laughs> really loud. And I just drove by, I was wearing mirrors, sunglasses, and just kind of like looking at them and they would look at me and I'd just kind of stare at them the same way that they would stare at me. And... I'm glad we stayed. <laughs> I don't I might not even know their real name. You gotta get the disco ball. Yeah. Oh look, it's a little baby one. That's your souvenir, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's, it, is that just like a photograph that you took? And, and uh, the on? Occupy Lego Leaks guy made this for me. <laughs> that's excellent. Getting arrested on the first day it must have been a bit of a shock. Uh, yes. Uh, I got arrested uh, by Secret Service. They took me into 
cell and they interrogated me and even though they said it was a routine traffic stop they uh, arrested me said my license was suspended which was not true and they asked me how I knew Julian Assange or Bradley Manning who I worked for uh, why I was doing what I was doing uh, who paid for the truck who paid for uh, me to do it who was paying me all these things you know they just wanted to know and it all came out of your own pocket eh? right and so <laughs> I answered every question that they had for me with another question and usually that question was, is this a question you would usually ask a routine traffic stop? And they'd say no, and we'd move on to the next question. So there, I had no information for them, and I gave them no information. Um, but when I got in the, co uh, the, the police car that they had, and they drove me away in handcuffs, I told them immediately, like, this is the coolest experience I've ever had. <laughs> And of course, you've never met Julian Assange. He rang you one day, didn't he? I think you tweeted one day, somebody rang you, but maybe we won't somebody, say. Somebody. Somebody rang you, and it made your day. I think that was the yeah. tweet I remember. Cause Some, I've somebody called me. This is going to be the moment when we get... Oh, yeah. Mr. Clark? Broke by... The car gets oh, broken by the police. Here we go. Oh dear. So give me the commentary, what's just happened here? You've been... Well, we were ordered to move. I just got into Clark's truck to conduct an interview with him. I was coming down to our storage on Broadway with a truck full of blankets. And they came to me... For the occupiers? For the occupiers, yeah. And they asked me what was in the truck and, and I told them, you know, my stuff. And they pulled me over and they tried to say that my windshield wipers were on but my headlights weren't and they said my license plate was a little tilted. Uh, I do not consent to a search. Excuse me? I asked for a search warrant or reasonable cause to search my vehicle and they couldn't provide me with one. So after about 40 minutes they finally pulled me out of the truck and arrested me. Once they opened the passenger door they dragged me out. They saw my press patch because I have a press patch for Occupy uh, Wall Street. They just laugh at it. And that's when I saw Alex, and Alex said, I can take your truck for you. And Alex, who is a lawyer, by the way. Right. Yeah. right. And they wouldn't give Alex the keys. They, they oh, they'd already it. taken your keys, had they? Um, no, not at this point. So uh, they wouldn't let you give the keys to Alex. Right. That's yeah, very strange. Exactly. Yeah. It turned out they didn't tow my truck away. They ended up leaving it on Varick Street in a bus stop and left it overnight. At a bus stop? Yeah. They, you mean they illegally parked your vehicle? Yeah. Forty-three minutes. They say the last five minutes is where all the action's at. <laughs> oh yeah, because people snipe. Snipe? That's what they call it? Yeah, yeah, when you... They have computer programs where you can have it set bids at like the last possible millisecond. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's not that hard. I mean, if they can do flash stock transactions... Right. It's just like one flash stock transaction. But my Twitter is lighting up pretty hard. Right now. It's, people are on the edge of their seat. <laughs> 39,000 people. <laughs> He's on the verge of committing suicide if this doesn't sell. <laughs> yeah. That's the only shot we're going to use. Uh, yeah. You want coffee? Yeah, I want some coffee. Alright, I think he's making coffee. You making coffee, Doc? Oh, big money, big money! I live in the tent for a year. I hope this is not a big flop. I need, just need one more bit. 13 minutes. 7 minutes. We're down to 6 minutes. Twitter feed's going crazy. This is so tense! <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this. Well, when it comes to drama with the WikiLeaks truck, <laughs> this is as intense as it ever gets. <laughs> Let me tell you.
<laughs> Forget <laughs> getting interrogated by Secret Service or ripped out of my truck by the NYPD. It's, who's gonna make the last bid on eBay? That... <laughs> Alright, we should turn the music off. The music's just. We are here with three minutes left. And we've got two bids, uh, both by uh, people I think who are anonymous, and uh, they have no ratings, so they, they just started like new accounts so that they could bid on this truck. And uh, I have no idea where they're from. Um, supposedly they contacted me through Twitter. Got to be getting pretty close. Two minutes left. One minute and 52 seconds. <laughs> All right. How are we doing? One minute and 45 seconds. Still two bids. One minute and 38 seconds. Come on now. One minute and 24 seconds. Somebody just call me? No, good. Don't call me right now. I'm busy. One minute and 13 seconds. Come on, big money, big money. What we got? What we're up to? 47 seconds. Come on. Oh. Who wants it? 40 seconds. Somebody does. Who wants it? 33 seconds. Seriously? Come on. Somebody's got 33 seconds. 28 seconds. Come on. Is it, aren't they supposed to bid in the last five minutes? What's happening? Let's see. Nothing. 17 nice. seconds. Oh. It's 13 <laughs> seconds. No more bids. Maybe. 8 seconds. Ah! 4 seconds. Oh, no. Oh. We just turned like 100 bucks of vinyl in a couple months of being a douchebag into $7,600. <laughs> 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 oh, look at those. Oh, you have different models. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And we make those right here in the shop. Oh, do you? 